Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Resident Evil 6, the final chapter. So, as always, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the furry. To start off furry, it's a Resident Evil movie, so there's a variety of zombie styles. And some of them are a little bit furrier-ish than others. Moving on to the good and the bad. So, it's called the final chapter, and I'm glad that it is the final chapter. That being said, I really think that, spoiler alert for number five, that with number five, what they should have done, and what I think might make your enjoyment of that movie a little bit more fun, is that, so they end it with, like, all the, like, winged creatures and the zombies and the army, them versus the White House. What I think would have been better is if they had just had the after credit sequence, have her and Luther and the other rest of the gang thing uh, standing next to, like, a dead Wesker, maybe. Maybe dead Wesker, I'm just saying. Uh, but... You know, standing there, sitting there, like, cracking back, having a, having some alcohol or smoking a cigar or something, just, like, chilling on the last dead body of the... because they won the war. And that's it. That's the end. Like, they finished out killing those zombies, and there you go. That's the end of it. But instead, they start off this one with absolutely zero explanation as to what happened to everyone else that was with her. You can assume they died, because you never see them again. Um, but... They also, d <laughs> they have this cool opening, cool-ish opening sequence of her fighting a big flying wingy thing, uh, but she never uses her powers. And then later on, they're like, ah, he faked giving you her his power, your powers back. And don't get me wrong, I think that is a more logical explanation than like, hey, you're the only one that successfully bonded the T-Virus, you've been a thing, and we've been studying you, and figured trying to duplicate your things for all this time, but we came up with a magic thing to turn, your off, to turn off your abilities and neutralize the T-Virus in you, but then we hit you with it again to bring back your powers magically. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think that they should have just left her underpowered instead of, like, having the end sequence be like, give you your powers back, if they were just going to not have her be powered in this one. But, um, the fact that she's like, oh, he just pretended to give you back her powers. I'm pretty sure she, like, carved a hole in a hallway when she got her powers back in that movie, so I don't know what fakery he was doing to duplicate that. So, it's logical, but also not logical. And that's kind of the theme with this movie, is that there are some logical things in this movie, but also not logical. Like, they give an explanation for the why the T-Virus was developed, which is logical. But then they bring in some other things of like, oh, hey, the Umbrella Corporation was doing this, that, and the other thing, which doesn't jive with especially the second one and the, well, especially the third one, really, where we see scenes of, like, the board meeting of... Isaacs and Wesker and like he's trying to find a cure for the virus and none of, and none of them and they're like oh we're like what are we everyone's dead like how are we going to do this like you need to you need to up your efforts to try and find a way to wipe out all the people because these people are a problem and he's like I'm still working on it and then in this one they're like ah but they had a cure the whole time like really did, did you you sure about that especially because you are referencing a bunch to the guy in the third movie. I think he was in the third one. Yeah, he was the guy in the third movie. Yeah, the guy in the second movie, I think. Yeah, he was something. Anywho, but they have this guy, and then, then they bring him back for this one. So you definitely have to remember that movie. So you remember all the things in the movie, including the board meetings, where they're like, you need to figure out a way to stop this. So if he already knew how to stop this... Why wasn't he? So, I get that they're trying to find the, like, magic solve this problem button so that we can have a satisfying end of the series where, like, the zombies die, but your your magic button conflicts with the rest of your series. Whatever. Um, also, like, they had this really beautiful sequence of this skyscraper building, like, burning and on fire. Like, it looked beautiful. How they caused it was beautiful. Why they were doing it was beautiful. That's great. But there's also supposed to be a bunch of, like, women, kids, and elderly in there. Th that's why you had to be in the building. So you like the building on massive amounts of fire, and you just think, like, ah, no, 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 no. The fire was in the air really close to the building. It's not going to light the building on fire at all. Nope. Nope. Just, just the floor of the building where all the people and the bodies and everything else are. And that doesn't... Fire doesn't spread, guys. Fire doesn't spread. It's fine. So, what? <laughs> yeah, and then... Uh, she, they gave her a triple shotgun because she had a, she had two double shotguns in uh, Retribution or Afterlife, but that wasn't enough. So we're going to give you a triple barrel, and we're going to show you reloading it one time. 
And then you're just going to have to trust us that she somehow finds a way and a time to reload it every time that she needs to. Yep, sure. Another one of the things that bugged me about this movie is that Resident Evil 2 was probably the worst offender for the rapid cut style of fight scenes, where it's just like the camera was so zoomed in and had so many like 15 cuts a second that you couldn't really tell what was going on or who was what to disguise either just low energy fight scenes or too, too much of the stunt doubles or whatever, but way too many cuts. This one has that same problem. It's not quite as bad as Resident Evil 2, but it definitely is shot in the same style of quick cuts. So whatever they, whatever editor or director or whatever, I think it's the director for the same director for all of them, but still, like whatever editor style that he went with in 2, he went with in 6. And that was not a good decision in my opinion. Did not like it. <sighs> also, there's this instance where there's like this giant like vehicle size, like a vehicle can drive through this gate. gate. And then there's this one survivor with a literal army of zombies chasing her, and they were like, lower the gate to let her in. The zombies are like five feet from her, and you're going to lower your giant gate? Like, you realize you're going to let in all of the zombies, right? Just like, lower a hook or a fucking rope or something for when she gets there, and then just haul her up. Don't lower your main line of defense. You'll be shocked to hear that some zombies got in. What? I know, right? It's so crazy. Also, there's an instance where they're using some goggles, and could those goggles have been highlighting motion? Maybe, but it really, really looked like those were heat vision goggles, like heat vision binoculars, essentially, that was picking up two more armies of the dead coming. Remember how zombies are dead, which means they're not alive, which means they don't have blood pumping, which means they don't generate heat, yet somehow you can see them on the thermal imager, just saying. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Like, they made a point about it in the first movie that you don't, like, they have thermal cameras in the hive, which is why they didn't see any zombies, because the zombies were generating heat. And now your camera is showing heat, and it's like, oh no, zombies are coming. <sighs> Whatever. They also set up a really elaborate defense system in what was under an hour that somehow this building saw that vehicle come. I don't know. It just, it seems like that vehicle would have been there before they got the defense set up. Maybe they already had some in place. Whatever. But, yeah. Uh, also, the Isaacs dude, like, he gets rescued from something, and the dude, and there's a guy that's like, oh, hey, we're so glad to have you back. Like, I'm, I'm so glad that we were able to rescue you. Like, oh, what, what do you need? Oh, you need some coffee? I'll get that. And then, and then he's like, oh, but we need to take you back to the thing. And the guy's like, no, I need to go do this other thing. And he's like, oh, well, but sir, my order said that we have to take And then he just fucking shoots him. Like, the bro was happy to see you, man. Like, he wasn't just like, just, hey, we had to come pick you up. Get in. He, like, he was genuinely happy to see you. And then you just shoot him for, like, him trying to be like, hey, but I do have other orders. Like, you weren't just like, hey, I'm superseding those orders, or like, no, we're going to do it my way. No, just going to straight up fucking shoot him. I don't know how people stay loyal to you when there's only, according to this film, like, 5,000 people left in the world. And speaking of that whole thing, this whole time that this was going on, when they were like, oh, you only have, you know, 48 hours to save all the people. Oh, you only have 17 hours. Oh, you only have 17 minutes left, or whatever. Like, they have... They... They have a timer that they keep on showing, like in a watch for her and in other magical places for whatever reason. And so they keep on showing this like, oh, the last human settlement's going to get destroyed unless you do this in this time frame. Why do you have it down to the minute? Aren't zombies just like a little unpredictable? What? How is it down to the minute? Every single time they showed that and that level of specificity, I'm like, that's got to be a thing. That's got to be a thing for like, and there's going to there's gonna be like a ha-ha. This was just to lure you into the thing that I needed you to do the thing within this time frame. It has nothing to do with The Last Survivors. But nope. Uh, the, I guess spoiler-ish alert that, yeah, no, that's, they, they literally want you to believe in this movie that they have it down to the minute for The Last Colony of the Survivors. Um, and also a little pretty, again, a little bit of a spoiler alert, but pretty early on, she's like, hey, you need to come do the thing because there's a cure that will take out it's an airborne virus that will that will kill all the T-virus in the world, so you have to go get it. And the thing is, with how little time they have left before the zombies supposedly will kill this settlement, that settlement has to be real fucking close to Raccoon City if they think that that airborne virus is going to make it over there in time. And then at the end of this, so, spoiler, actual spoiler for, like, whether or not they succeed, which I kind of hope you can figure that out in a movie like this, but 
They succeed in releasing the virus, the airborne antivirus, I guess. And it it is fucking quick. She, like, taps it on the ground, and then just, like, the zombies in front of her just, like, <clears throat> they just all collapse. Like, and it's just in a wave. So, I, instead of the wind moving like this, or like this, the wind was moving in a this way, like an expanding wave way, which is a little weird to me. But, yeah, it would have to move that fast in order to be fast enough to reach the next human colony within the seven minutes. And, spoiler, spoiler alert, uh, they tried to, like, insert a line of the Red Queen being like, yeah, I called off the attack on that settlement. Why was Umbrella attacking humans when there's so few of them left? That doesn't make any sense. Um, so, no, don't buy it. I feel like there was a, a secondary plot line that they just cut out and then just threw in that line to try and make it make sense. And it doesn't. Not buy it. Uh, but also, what if the wind, the wave, like a super expanding wave wind, what if that is moving the wrong direction? <laughs> what if too many thunderstorms, like, thunderstorm it into water droplets into the ground before it's able to wind everywhere? And so they even do, like, the final singer of, like, ah, the other one was brought, the start of this T-virus was brought worldwide because of, uh, like, planes, trains, and automobiles, and... Now this one is just being brought by the wind, so my job's not going to be over until, you know, because it could take years for the wind to go to all the different places. So until then, my job's not over. And then she's, like, riding her motorcycle with multiple wing things, shadows coming after her, and she, like, smiles. I don't know why she fucking smiled, because one of those motherfuckers almost killed her by herself, and she had, like, a big heavy vehicle. Now she just has a motorcycle. Not sure how she thinks she's going to survive that, but maybe she's heading into the wind, or ahead of the wind, and maybe it's just going to hit them. I don't know, but I just don't buy, like, this little tiny vial spreading through the world and not going to have any issues with rain, wind, or otherwise, or anything else. Unless it somehow survives in the water, and then, like, why couldn't you just put it in the water? I, I don't know. Just, like, how how resilient is this antivirus? But it seemed to kill the T-virus dude super quick, but also, if it's killing the T-virus, what? Well, I guess that could explain why they just, like, collapse as opposed to, like, dissolving, if it's just killing just the virus parts, but... I don't know. It just... It's kind of dumb. It had some neat fight sequences, I guess. Uh, I like that we again get Ali Larder's character back and that we got a, I think, a reasonable explanation for why she came back. But uh, this was, movie was generally unsatisfying. Uh, they leaned a little bit too heavy on the CGI, the quick cuts and the darkness uh, to kind of disguise the budget that they had for that level of CGI. And again, too many quick cuts. Not great. And again, just not a... They have the clone problem that they had from the first one, or from the fifth one. Yeah, from the fifth one, uh, where, you know, Wesker's back, so he's back in this one again, and then his character dies, and I'm still like, but do they have another clone facility somewhere? Like, you can just have these things go on forever when you have this many clones everywhere. And then, you know, Big Bad Isaac's guy gets killed by his own clone, or were they both clones because they're both programmed to believe they're the real one? So they, they, could, have, they could totally have done, like, a final chapter end paragraph part seven, or whatever, and she'd been like, ah, that was, they were both clones, I'm the real, real Isaacs. Eh. Also, still spoilers, since I'm in the spoiler area at this point, I, I immediately recognized Alice's voice when they were doing the flashback clip. Was anybody not like, hey, that sounds exactly like Mila Yamovich, just kind of craggly. <sighs> no? Because I fucking did, and I was just like, yeah, no, that's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely Alice's voice. So now, now we get the whole thing, and now we see why the opening thing was the way it was opening. Whatever. So again, I think that you should just end it on the fifth one and pretend that they won that battle, and then develop the magic cure, and and there you go. Now, now the cure is spreading to the wind, as opposed to all the bullshit that happened in this one with no explanation of and no caring that all of her friends died. But again, they started this one like she had just had a Samus reset of her powers and of her equipment, because she's having to, like, assemble equipment as she's going along. What happened to all your other guns and your knives and everything else? You're just, again, you're just, like, starting the video game as, like, oh, now I have, now I have nothing. Let me pick up some guns here and some knives here. Like, ugh, dumb. Dumb. But, whatever. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Bye!